to go. But I can't find my toque. How far do we got to go yet? Uh, we have 1,086 kilometers. So it's about 650 miles or so to our destination. A little less than that. Hey there, everybody. Thursday today. The day's already gone past us. It's quarter after four. I've gotten a little ways down the road already. This morning, we spent our time chaining down our three generators that we're bringing up to uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. I just stopped now to make sure everything's still there. One thing I like about these Peterbilts, the door's locked. I like that. Remember, that always bugged me about the Western Star, that whenever I got out of it, if the door was locked and I opened it from the inside like that, I wouldn't be able to get out. Small things like that bother me, I guess. All right, let's check our load here. Everything still looks good. Everything is still there. One, two, three. We didn't lose one. Chains are all nice and tight. Got my tarps on the back there. They didn't fly off. Got nothing else on the deck. There we go. These are pricey little things too. Tell you what, these are uh, mobile generators. Gonna be used for something very fancy in Canada, I'm sure. But I can't find my toque. I just stopped here for like a short little power nap. Oh, Governor, I can't find my toque. The weasel needs to go out though. One sec, diesel, okay? All right, come. Collar on, right? Good. Come on, buddy, this way. This way. Good boy. So it's beginning to get dark already. And I was wondering to myself, what's going on? Like, I hadn't even picked up the camera yet. I hadn't even started vlogging today yet. I'm looking around when I stopped here to check the chains and whatnot. And I'm like, why is it getting dark already? Today, when I'm filming this, is the first day of winter. It's also the winter solstice. The days get longer from today on. So today is the shortest daylight day of the year. That's why I feel like this whole day is just flown by. We just got the load loaded, went down the highway, and the sun's going down already. So it did take the majority of the day to get loaded. I was there first thing, and by the time I rolled out of there, it was probably about 11.30, close to noon. Uh. There was two trucks that somehow managed to get there before me in the morning, even though I was sleeping like right around the corner. Got there in the morning, they were waiting there already. So that was kind of disappointing. I had to wait for them to get loaded, even though I was there like a day earlier. But that's the way it goes. You snooze, you lose. I got loaded, got it all chained down. It was actually pretty simple to chain. Uh, these, they build these things and uh, these generators with special hooks just for the chains. So they're built to transport, which is nice. It's kind of annoying when you get freight that isn't exactly designed to be pulled long distances or like tied down or strapped or if it's too fragile. It could be very difficult to make sure you don't damage it, but also at the same time, make sure it doesn't fall off your trailer and kill someone. <laughs> so these generators have little hooks that are built right into it, specifically just for transporting. So we're good to go, those chains are tight. These things aren't going anywhere, I feel confident. All right, let's get going. Let's get going. We've got another, uh, oh, how, how far do we have to go yet? One second, I'm gonna take you off the mount. Ah, there you go. How far do we got to go yet? Uh, we have 1,086 kilometers. It's about 650 miles or so to our destination. A little less than that to the Canadian border. We're trying to get as close as we can to the border tonight. Tomorrow morning, I'm stopping at a parcel service near the border. Uh, I gotta pick up all my Christmas gifts that I bought for Brit. Uh, I bought them all on Amazon, then I get them shipped to an American address, because uh, it's cheaper that way. It's way more expensive just to get it shipped like two miles up over the border to Canada than for me just to go pick it up down there. So uh, that, that's what a lot of Canadians actually do. There's uh, parcel services right across the border from like Washington State all the way up to Maine, like right across the border. You can order your stuff online and just get it sent to these places. 
and then just go down and pick it up and pay the duty on it. But since I've been in the States more than 48 hours, I don't even have to pay the duty on it. And I'm going past there anyway, so it's not like I'm going out of my way, so. You save money. You can buy more Christmas gifts this way. All right, let's try this again. Let's get out of here. Apologize in advance for the sort of shaky footage. Like I was telling you yesterday, the, the mount I have in here for the camera isn't as nice as my regular one. But my regular one I'm putting in the Volvo because I'll be driving that more regularly. And I'm just on this truck for a week. So I didn't want to bother spending all the money into a nice mount and whatnot. So this one will do. It's just a little bit shaky. Sort of like in the, the car as well, you know. Maybe just won't use quite as much road footage today and tomorrow. Before you know it, we'll be in the regular truck again and off we'll go to the races. Well, it's turned into quite an interesting night here. Crawling along at about 45, 40 mile an hour. I thought I was gonna miss this snowstorm, but here it is. I think we're around about Black River Falls, Wisconsin. We still got another 600 miles to go yet. Hopefully at least another 500 today yet. Dad was at the border of North Dakota and Manitoba, and he was saying that the weather was good there, so I'm kind of hoping that I'm gonna eventually pull out of this storm and that it doesn't follow me up there. Next time I pull over, I'll have to check the weather for uh, west of Minneapolis just to see what I can expect. I was expecting a little bit of snow here, uh, but less than an inch. It's the first rest area into Minnesota. I'm just gonna stop here and check my chains and load securement and whatnot. I uh, should have taken that spot there underneath the light. That would have been nice. That would have been smart. Okay, I should have taken that one. I should have taken that one. You know what? I'm gonna take this one over here at the end. I'd like some light above me just so I can sort of see a little better, but I got a flashlight if worst comes to worst. Here we go, lots of room over here. There we go. Onto this one right here. And I just passed over the scale and they didn't pull me in, so. I'm guessing they took a lo uh, look at my load and they didn't want to see it any closer, so I'm not expecting anything to be out of order back there. But, just to be safe, it's time to check them. All right here, everything looks good, everything, good. where's the lights, There, there's the lights. All right, all right, oh boy. Diesel, wanna go outside while we're here? We're only gonna stop for just a very short time, okay? So you gotta go quick, all right? Don't mess around, we're not here to sightsee, okay? I haven't told him about uh, the conversation I had with Britt about her uh, seeing that horse that had just been hit. I think he'd be very upset. He really likes horses. Did I hear you say horse? I like horses. They're like wee big dogs, man. Diesel, though, you, you haven't even eaten your breakfast yet. Are you not feeling good today? It's supper time already and you haven't even eaten your breakfast. What's going on? You need to eat. You need to fill that belly. No, maybe feeling a little down. You probably miss Brit and Frankie and Chevy. Oh, look at him perk up. Frankie, I like that little wiener. You miss Chevy. You miss Mom. Yeah, miss Brit. Mom. You know her as Mom, don't you? Look at him. Are we going outside or not, man? Stop playing with my emotions. I miss him so much. Well, they're all still there. That's a good start. It's a good start to the little inspection here. Chains are still attached. I'm just gonna show you this all and then I'm gonna go around here and test them all out. You see, this is what I was talking about before. Can you see that? How there's little hooks? I'll show you from the other side. There's better light on the other side, I think. Let's let's go back in. Well, let's, let's walk the weasel first. We'll go back here to the pet area and then we'll come show the good people what I was talking about. All the chains, they're all still tight by the looks of it. We'll look at that a little closer. Also paying attention to the, the end here. I'm also paying attention to the end here. I have this strap on there with some felt underneath the strap, holding this down onto this wood piece there. You don't want that to shift at all. That'll mess everything up. But everything looks really good. Both my tarps are still there. I don't know. Look at all these guys. So how are you guys all faring with this new e-log mandate down here in the States? You guys been doing all right? I've noticed that uh, it's harder to get parking at night because uh, parking lots fill up sooner. 
because everyone wants to stop before you know they run out of hours obviously whereas before i think they'd push it a little bit further but i've been noticing parking lots filling up a little bit quicker but i've been on e-logs for like a better part of a year already so it doesn't bother me that much but if i had a choice i'd choose paper logs obviously but what you gonna do what you gonna do it is what it is all right bud come on i'm gonna put you back in the truck and then i'm gonna go check all these chains a little closer okay i'm gonna put you back in there first i don't want you to get in the way of any other drivers here that would just be awful if you ever got hurt these trucks are big and you're a little i know you're a big boy but you're still a little small compared to the trucks you know what i mean all right hold on up. good boy i'll be in here with you in just a second okay you be good let's go around to this side here oh the lighting's not that good here either see if i can find a good example of where i can show you like this can you see that there they built these hooks on there specifically for load securement is what i was told when i was loading this and it's one chain all the way through from this side all the way to that side the binders on the other side there as you can tell so each one of these chains is good to hold 6600 pounds and there's two chains on here one there and one here these chains here are holding it from sliding that way obviously and the chains on the front here or the front of the trailer are holding it that way preventing it from sliding forward when i break and then we have the straps here pinning that uh whatchamacallit the hitch down so that doesn't move i feel confident with this it hasn't budged an inch all still looks really good really really good awesome all right let's carry on guys well it's a good thing that after i brought the camera in here after i showed you it i went back there and i was going to test all the chains right just to make sure they're all as tight as they possibly can be it's a good thing i checked because there's one two three four chains four out of six chains that i was able to tighten yet i mean they were tight they were still holding it in place but I always like it to be as tight as possible, right? There's no reason to uh, leave any little bit of slack for the freight to jump around a little bit. So obviously in the last hour or so as I was going down the road, maybe the chains settled a little bit, just a hair. So I moved all the binders up one, uh, one link on the chain, and tightened it up real good. Believe me, that freight isn't gonna even move a hair. Right now, but this is why you always have to stop and check your freight because you never know you never know it may look tight when you first look at it give a little tap it may look like it's tight like i always say it's better to be too safe than too sorry let's get going got a long way to go yet just getting into fargo north dakota and i think this is where we're gonna spend the night i just looked down at the thermostat or whatever the thermometer on my uh on my truck here on the dash it says it's minus 23 outside when did that happen the last time i looked down at it was in minneapolis and it was like zero or minus 20 well what's that in fahrenheit that's got to be close to zero fahrenheit wow so it dropped 20 degrees celsius in the last couple of hours oh wow it's a nipply one out there ladies and gentlemen It was a cold winter's night, and all you could smell was diesel fumes. And I'm not talking about that diesel fumes either. Hope you guys enjoyed this little vlog I made for you. I put a lot of effort into it. Please hit that like button for me if you did like it. If you feel like lying to me, if you hated it, and you feel like lying, I'll forgive you just this once if you hit the like button anyway. Just this once though, all right? Lying is bad, don't lie. All right, kids, but hit the like button. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.